two people, not including my staff and La Drang people to get up there, gets free packet of pearls. Are you guys ready? Isn't this kind of fun? <laughs> One, two, three, bye. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Is Jivan and what's the other one? Nancy. And Nancy. <laughs> yes, they went two packet of pearls. This was consecrated by my guru. This was in my altar in Gandhi. I brought it here for everybody to receive blessings. So you can take good luck. Shakyamuni. Muni. Ah, better. <laughs> Offering the kata shakamani is he put his prayers. How he does that is he holds one kata in his hands and he makes a good prayer by holding the other one to his forehead. So he'd be like this. Holds his forehead to make a prayer. After he's held to his forehead, we believe that the prayers have gone there. Then he offered the kata up to shakamani. You guys are my friends, students, and people I've known for a long time. Do not treat this place as a store. Do not treat this place as a retail outlet. Its appearance is retail outlet, but it has multiple meaning. This place is a holy place. It contains Shakyamuni. It contains many holy Buddhas. And all the things that's been sold here go directly to buying new stock to replenish the stock here. Nobody gets any profit. Nobody gets any money. In this life and all lives, may you and your husband, husband and wife, never be separated from Vajugini. This life, you guys are born together to do Dharma work, to do Dharma practice, to do Dharma um, learning together. From previous lives, you've done prayers. From previous life, you have some kind of connection to Dharma. And here, you're again together to do Dharma. So today, you're inviting a very holy Vajugini back. It's a very, very auspicious day. So, Vajugini, come to my home. Reside in my home. I make a special place for you. I make a special offering. You're the fruit of my life. I've worked hard my whole life. I've put a lot of energy and time into my life, and now I'm aging. Now sometimes I get sick. So the fruit of my life is doing Vajraganese practice and inviting Vajraganese home. Chung is inviting Lama Tsongkhapa back as an offering to his parents. No joke, he loves his mother so much, he's inviting this back to take back to his mother's altar for the mother to worship. And she's very sweet. Mother, mother keeps telling me, Ho Lang. Ho Ho. That's right. A greedy kingdom is inviting Abba Lokadeshara back to his house too. Yeah. Kangnam doesn't, doesn't spend on himself. Look at his shoes. Um, these people have a lot of faith in the Dharma, and they want to start collecting more merits. They want to bring something home that has meaning in their lives. God, I didn't see you guys. Hello.
Tibetan traditions consider very, very, very auspicious to have a prayer room especially set out. So this room was an extension, correct? It wasn't like this. She made it, she extended it actually. So this is actually an extension. So what happens is that um, it's considered very auspicious to have a prayer room for you and your family to do offerings. So this is what this is. This is the Vandragini Chapel. And like in Kathmandu, we went to the chapels that belong to four different families. So I thought to myself, why not come to our first Vajagini chapel in the southern hemisphere, which is right here. So when we go to the chapels in Kathmandu, what's the difference if we go to those chapels and we come here? There's no difference at all. So I wanted to come here to pay homage to Vajagini, to make offerings to Vajagini, and for all of you to see and have audience with Vajagini. And this is the first Vajagini chapel, as I know, in this region, because I've not seen anywhere. I've not heard it. I've not seen it on the internet. So I think you guys should be very um, happy to see this beautiful chapel. And our lineage lamas are there. This is my root teacher on the right. This is my root master, Kevjasan Ramchi. On the right is Kevjasan Ramchi, my master. His master is on the left, Trijan Ramchi. Trijan Ramchi's master is Kevjapapanka Ramchi. So these are the lineage masters. In the future, to those who are ready, and I will say cooperative in a spiritual way, those who have been cooperative, those who are ready, who are cooperative. Because most things I get people to do is basically training for them. So if I tell them to do something and they do it, it's very good training for them. So people that I give training to, I ask them to do this and this and this, if I have to repeat myself many times, then it's, it stunts their growth, it stunts their practice in the future. So what's the training? Not to train you how to eat, not to train you how to walk or sleep, but train your attitude, thinking, fortitude, to put up with difficulties, to accept problems, to accept obstacles, to accept. So the training that I give people is dependent on their own situation in mind. So I want you to get one practice, one yidam, and then in the future, in our retreat center, I would like to teach this practice very quietly, very secretly to a select group. Who I teach to will be how you act now, how you behave now. How you behave doesn't mean you give me gifts, you, you come and tell me nice things. No, how you behave now is how well you carry out your transformations. How well. That is what it's dependent on. It's not a bargain here. I will not confer these initiations on anybody. You say other lamas do. I don't care what other lamas do. You see, let me make something very clear to all of you. I do not sell Dharma. I do not bribe with Dharma. You will never get one word of Dharma out of me for any other reason but for me to teach you Dharma. Simple as that. I'm very strict. Why am I very strict? Because my teachers are very strict. My guru, who I received the Vajagini initiation from, never let me look at her statue or picture or even let me own one until after I received their initiation. Some people say, oh, I don't want to see Rimji because I'm scared. So I avoid Rimji because I'm scared. Actually, that's lying. That's lying. No, I don't believe. Because when I was young, I was very scared of my Rimji. Very, very scared. But I would follow up. I was so scared that I follow up every single instruction he gave me. You see, if you're scared of your Lama, you follow his instructions. You don't run away from him. If you're really scared of your Lama, you will follow out all his instructions exactly. Why? That means you're really scared. You, you don't want to get him upset. That's what I did when I was a child. So after, the, after I was very lucky to receive the initiation, and I finally got to see the picture. For those who are well-behaved, meaning you control your mind and you transform. You stick to the center. You stick to your lama. You stick to your lineage. You stick to your practice. You don't run here and there. For those people, I will arrange Vajragini practice. And I picked Vajragini for all of us for many reasons. She's quick. She's easy. She's very, very efficacious. She's extremely beneficial for people like us. And her meditation is relatively simple compared to other deities due to the simplicity of her body. Yet everything is complete. So everything is training. So in our center in the future, Tem Kacha Ling. Tem is Tem Rinpoche's name. Kacha is Vajraganese paradise. Ling is the place of Vajraganese paradise. So in our retreat center in the future, I'm not going to have a lot of deities and a lot of practices, a lot of idams. No. The main prayer hall would be Lama Tsongkhapa because it's general public. Then there will be a chapel to dedicate its Vajragini for her practice. 
and that's it. I'm not going to put in a lot of things to confuse people. Definitely not. I'm going to have stupas that have like thousands, hundreds of thousands. I'm going to have many stupas that have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of images of Anjurini inside. I will do that again and again and again and again. So what I want to see in Malaysia and I want to see in the southern region is many Vajrakini chapels. Your chapel doesn't have to be this big. It can be a corner in your room. But everyone should have a Vajrakini statue. Everyone. I'm going to do a little bit opposite of my guru because my guru wouldn't let you even see her holy face and body until you receive the initiation. I'm going to do a little backwards because some of you, the time is short. So I need to implant the seeds in you very soon. So everybody should have a Lama Tsongkhapa image. Everybody. Everybody should have a Vajragini image and make offerings to Vajragini and Tsongkhapa and make a strong connection. It's very, very important. Why Tsongkhapa for your preliminary practice? Vajragini for planting seeds for your ultimate practice. When we do Vajragini's 11 yogas, it will transform your life. It will transform your mind. It will transform your practice. So whatever department you're working in, whatever you are sponsoring, whatever you're helping, whatever you're volunteering, do it from your heart. Do it as training. Do it as practice. And if you're fortunate enough to work for Kichara Paradise, Kichara House, as a stipend employee, you should do double. You shouldn't think, oh, I'm supposed to work from this time to this time, that's it. No, you should work double, you should work triple. Why? Your work is not work. It is Dharma practice. And if you have the fortune to be in a Dharma organization, do Dharma work, and not have to do work, and then come do Dharma work, you're very fortunate. People have to do work and then come do Dharma work. Example, Julia had to work very hard and then come and do Dharma work. A lot of time is wasted already. So if you had the luck to work in Dharma work and you don't do it well, people have to chase you, you don't check over your work, you don't do it nicely, you don't do it well the first time, you're not doing Dharma work and you're not doing work. Why? You will never survive in the outside world with that kind of ethics. Never. And then if you can't do work well outside and you can't do work well inside, how? So this family, when I told them, buy this statue, put it in your house, and make offerings, they never said no. They never said, oh, I cannot. I didn't have to convince them. When I said do it, they did it. Very, very simple. Is the people I say, buy this, do this, set up this, or do this, they find it very difficult. That's the obstacle, obstacle they receive in their own practice. Why? The difficulty they create is the difficulty is in their mind. Is their mind. So therefore, this is a sample of what Malaysians can do when we understand the importance of the Dharma. This is not a, a monk house. This is not a Rinpoche house. This is a husband and wife with kids at the end, just like all of you. A chapel is not necessarily a whole room. A chapel can be a beautiful Vajrini altar set up in a corner somewhere in your house. It doesn't have to be a whole room. So let's say you're a student and you're young, you don't have much money. A Vajrini chapel right now can be a small tata of her set up with beautiful offerings that turn into a statue, that turn into a bigger one, that turn into a room whatever you can do. Everyone must have a Vajragini. Everyone. I 100% recommend it for you to completely make offerings to. Completely. Everyone. So Vajragini doesn't take care of your marriage. Vajragini doesn't bring you money. Vajragini doesn't heal your diseases like um, Karasigura, um, Medicine Buddha. Vajragini is not like Zambala, bring you money. Vajragini is not like Tar, bring harmony. Vajragini doesn't protect you from spirits, etc. So why should you have it? Because Vajrayini gives you of the high. That when you pass away, you will be able to control your death. And you will be able to take rebirth at will. When you practice Vajrayini's teachings, you will receive the highest of all powers to be able to control your death and where you go. The second is next level down is when you do Vajraginis practice completely, 100%, if you're not able to control your death, when you die, Vajragini will appear to you in the bardo, which means the in-between state, intermediate state, and she will guide you. The lowest practitioner, the lowest practitioner, when you die due to Vajraginis practice, you will reincarnate in an area, in a district, in a place where Vajragini practitioners her lineage and her initiations and her commentary is alive. Not fake practitioners. So the lowest practitioner will be born again in a place where Vajraginis practice is alive and working and you will be able to continue for seven lifetimes. For the medium practitioner, 
in your death, after you have died, and you have left your body, you will see Bardo. Bardo is the intermediate 49 days. You will hear this sound. You will hear this sound simultaneously. In your intermediate state, you will hear this sound. Then when you hear male and female voices chanting, the words of emptiness. And you will be enveloped in light, and you will see an entourage. You will see Mother Vajugini come down to you. She will hug you. She will kiss you. She will nurture you. She will treat you like a long lost child. Outwardly, she's Vajugini. Inwardly, she's your mind. She will embrace you and hug you. And as she's embracing, hugging you, and kissing you, that's literally what it says. As she's embracing you, hugging you, and kissing you, you will feel yourself ascending, leaving to her paradise. What do you do in her paradise? It's not a Christian paradise. It's a paradise where you do Dharma practice intense without interruption to become a fully enlightened being. For the, that's the medium practitioner. For the highest practitioner, the highest, those who keep their vows, their samayas are clean, they do her retreats, and they achieve her practice in this life. You will control your death at will. When you wish to die, you will die. When you wish to become healthy, you will become healthy. When you wish to be sick, you will be sick. When you wish to recover from your sickness, you will recover from your sickness. When you wish to not recover from your sickness, you will not recover. Why? Kajasaram, she was very old and very decrepit already, and his back was bent, and he was walking on a walking stick. He went to have audience with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And Dalai Lama stroked his beard and said, Son Lama, it's not time for you to die yet. You have a lot of work still left. You live long. I command you, live long. Everybody saw in Gandhin. After the audience with Dalai Lama, Dalai Lama's command to Kajasaramji. Kajasaramji went into intense practice. And as the weeks went by, his back straightened up. His skin became smooth and taut. The walking stick he didn't need. By the time he came to America, he didn't use a walking stick anymore. He was vibrant. He was strong. He looked old, but not haggard. He looked old, but majestic. That was when Rimshi was already in his 70s. You can see. Gen Nima Rimshi, who lived behind me, also was walking on a walking stick, was decrepit, his back was bent. I saw with my own eyes. He lived right behind me. I see every day I visit him, decrepit like that. He had audience with Dalai Lama also, and Dalai Lama said to him, not many people are alive today who can show the power of Tantra. If you die, it would be such a waste from a lifetime of practice. Live long. Live as maximum. Don't pass away. Live long. Show people the power of the practice of Tantra. So after he had audience with Dalai Lama, we, I saw, not we or they, I saw, because he lives behind me. Every day, Genima Rimshi would be walking. His back would become straighter and straighter. He's already 78, straighter and straighter. No more walking stick, quite firm already. These are people who have achieved Vajraganese practice. Why? They can return their youth. In Vajraganese practice, there's the blessing of the nectar. It's very important. Every Vajragini practitioner who are deep will have this kind of item in their room near them. They will use it every day. The way it's blessed according to the Vajragini Tantra, it becomes medicine. If they wish to become youthful and long life, they will use this in such a way, according to Vajragini Tantra, to prolong their life. This item in Vajraganese Tantra becomes that of nectar. That is for sure. Many people don't know all that because they don't practice, they don't study. So my point is what? Is Vajraganese practice is not like Tara that gives you harmony or, or fulfill your needs or free you from the eight fears. Or it's not like Zambala's practice. You never go to Vajraganese and say, please give me money. Or if you have spirits and hantus, you definitely go to Setra. Or if people do black magic, you don't go to Vajraganese. You go to Setra immediately. Then if you want to increase your intelligence, you don't go to Vajraganese, you go to Manjushri. For those with a lot of anger, they go to Avalokiteshvara. Or they go to Yamantaka. And those who have a lot of, um, um, uh, how to say, hatred and anger, and they can't control, no patience, they go to the 1,000 arm of Avalokiteshvara. So if they have danger with their life, they have danger uh, with their health, they go to Medicine Buddha, they go to White Tower, Amitayas. You never hear anybody goes to Vajrayuni. So you say, why is she so sacred? Why is she so secret? Because Vajrayuni confers on you the ultimate power. Control of all your rebirths. 
she doesn't give it to you. You practice it according to her tantra and achieve it yourself. So imagine having the power of when you wish to die. And if you don't have the power of when you wish to die, when you die, having the assurance that you'll take good rebirth. And if you don't have the assurance of where you can take rebirth, the lowest practitioner, you will definitely take good rebirth because you will receive signs during Vajraganese practice, very sensitive signs. I cannot talk about that at this time. Very sensitive signs. Therefore, to have a Vajraganese statue at this time and make offerings of water, flowers, incense, fruit, mandala, pearls, jewels, um, uh, sensory items, cakes, fruits, every day is very powerful for all of you. Why? Create the causes to receive her practice in the future. Once you receive Vajraganese practice, you don't need any other practice. If you run for any other practice after you receive it, it's not bad, but you waste your time. Because the 100 hours you can spend, you spend 50 instead. Definitely not. Some more, those of you now who have not received Vajraganese practice, those of you who have not received, you should focus on Tsongkhapa, you should focus on Vajraganese now to create the causes. <laughs>
We have the liaisons at KMB here. We have the liaisons at Tamlaran all here. They're all here to serve you. Okay, welcome, welcome, thank you. I instituted Dharma House model. Why? All the people have to rent a room anyway. They have to rent a house. Why not live together? What's the difference? Why not? They won't cheat each other. They won't lie to each other. They won't hurt each other. They could grow and learn together with the same principle. They happen to work for the Dharma. They happen to have very strong Dharma inclination since they're very young. Why? This is not something you can force them into. They have some very strong Dharma seed in them. So when they meet their Lama, they meet their Guru, when the Dharma is taught, the seed will open. The seed will open and they will do Dharma practice. Isn't it beautiful? Yes. This is what we call a Gu Pen. Gu Pen. Dato Eric Tan, which is my friend, you met him during the um, land blessing donated 18,000 ringgits to me. We paid off first last security rent for this place. We renovated this place lightly and we made these cabinets. My dreams, my goals, my aspirations, my wishes to bring Dharma to others has never, ever changed. Hello, James. Hello, nice to see you. You again now. Oh yeah, you're KD. Ah, okay, okay. Extended preliminary practices is a creation of many statues. The many statues specifically is to create the causes for, achieve, for us to achieve the three types of Buddha bodies. Nirmanakaya, Sambhokakaya, and Dharmakaya. Creation of statues, embellishment of statues, or anything having to do with statues specifically creates the causes for us to achieve the three Buddha bodies. Achieving the three Buddha bodies without the attainments is of no use. It means indirectly to achieve Buddhahood. VIA body. So therefore, it's very, very powerful. When we create Buddha statues, we don't keep it empty. We don't keep it um, um, not filled. Why? We want every part of the statue to be something that creates tremendous amount of merit. So inside the statues, you have mantras for this part, this part, this part, this part, this part, and this part. So the mantras for these parts are very different. The mantras are very holy. There's prayers, there are mantras specifically for those parts of the statues, and they're rolled up to look like this. Rolled up to look like this, and then you can enshrine them inside a piece of silk or cloth, and then the top and the bottom will have saffron. And then you will fill up the statues with this. Along with these holy mantras, you can also put in jewelry for the brain part. You can also put in um, precious items like heirlooms that you have, you can offer inside. And you can offer up mini pictures of the same deity. Example, if you're making a Tsongkhapa statue, you can make mini pictures of Tsongkhapa statues, hundreds and thousands to fill up inside. Why? It will be equivalent that if you prostrate to the statue, whatever amount of Tsongkhapas is contained is the same amount of Tsongkhapas you are prostrating to. So it's very, very powerful. And then seal it and the rituals done. Here we don't do the rituals, but I will have our department learn that next step. That will be the next step to do rituals, to consecrate the mantra and consecrate the actual deity with the mantra inside. Okay? Then along with that, uh, we have clothes for the statues. And we a tailor has arrived next door for this. Along with that, the offering of gold, as you see here, along with that, the painting of the eyes. In fact, for statues and tankas, the last thing to be painted is the eyeballs. So, when you're painting the statue's eyes, the last part is usually by ritual, there's a special chant that you do, and when you do that chanting, you're painting the eyes, it's considered the statue come, I don't need, I don't need, the statue comes to life. 
Once that is done, you will take the statue and offer it to your Lama or to a monk or to a Sangha member to do consecration. And when you do the consecration, the statue, the actual deity enters and resides in. When you do your prayers, when you do your sadhas and offerings every day, there are many cases that the statue show miraculous signs. Many cases when it's done right. When you do the statues from beginning to end, correctly, correctly, methodically, systematically, with good motivation, the statues will come to life. There's no joke. We have many statues in the monasteries that have spoken a few times. If you look at them, black pills from, fall from their mouth or from their bodies. That people drink, they can become healed. Some statues, there's a Vajrayini statue in North India that's very famous. During the two civil wars in India, before many people were killed, people witnessed the Vajrayini statue cried. Tears fell. This statue I went to see is very, very famous. I have a picture of that statue, in fact. So many of these statues have shown miraculous signs. This department is not designed to have statues show miraculous signs, but it's designed that we can create the first Southeast Asian Tibetan studio in Southeast Asia. So what I want to do is I want all traditional art, mantra, statue, tanka, sewing, tailoring, I want it done here. A few reasons. If they can do it there, why can't we do it here? We're going to need it here because Dharma will grow. Third, if we could do it here, we ourselves can engage in the practice of collecting merits through holy images. And last but not least, we can save a lot of money, time, and energy if we can do it here. So some of the tailors and some of the statue people, when you ask them to show, they don't want to because they feel they'll lose business. But some are very kind, they show you. So this department is specifically for that, and it will grow, it will expand. Now, we have Kichara Discovery. Kichara Discovery is for travel and tours overseas. Then you'll see in Paul's shelf, there are many statues and many tankas, I'm sorry, statues and images. Why? Because he's using that to make molds. He's using that to replicate and duplicate to make molds. So why to create high quality statues, high quality images, high quality tatas for us? His department will be in charge of creating the 118 foot Lama Tsongkhaba. He will be fully in charge of that for our retreat center. Also the eight foot Tara, also the outdoor, indoor slash Zambala, his whole department. So it'll be quite big, quite a big job. And not only that, his department will be combining together with Saraswati to do the mantra, the consecration, for all inside the statue and painting. Just think, 118 foot Tsongkhaba will be taken care of by Paul's department. The Zambala, the creation, the making of it, the Tara, and, think carefully, the mantras, the consecration, the whole ritual will be done. So that's why we're creating departments now that will take care of all this work, one by one. And these departments will be transferred to Tem Kachaling in the future. Okay? Right now, I'm extremely tired, and my energy today has gone down very low. I'm extremely tired. My lungs feel weak, and I've been dizzy for the last few hours. I didn't tell anyone. I'm not well, and I'm having cold sweat now. What I want to share with all of you guys is when this happens, be happy. When you're sick and not well, don't show a black face. Don't distress people around you because it's a sign of selfishness. People have endured much suffering for the sake of others, happily. Mothers have caught, covered their child and they sh have their body shot and saved their child, happily. Many monks and nuns in Tibet endure suffering and beating, sterilization, electrocution, and they suffer happily, like Padogwamji. So while we have sickness, when we're exhausted, when we're tired, now is the time to practice Dharma. So I am not well now, I will engage in the practice Dharma now to lead as an example for all of you. So those of you who are tired, those of you who are not well, be happy. Why? I created the karma to be sick. I have to experience it. 
When the karma comes to me, if I show black face, unhappy, or anger, we create even more karma to be sick in the future. If we're happy, we purify the karma. Why? Because the karma comes out. When we're happy, we don't continue it. So therefore, when we're sick, don't burden others. Don't make it difficult for others. Endure. Feel very happy. And think, I am sick right now. I have fever. I'm sweating. My lungs are extremely tired, and I'm very dizzy. And perhaps tomorrow I'll be even more sick because I pushed myself. Plus, I just got word that Dr. Lowe himself is sick, so he can't treat me for the next four days. So that means if I go down tomorrow, I'm finished for the next four days. But it's been worth it. Because today I've served all of you. I've explained everything to you. My liaisons, for example, Ruby, have made all arrangements for all of you. So today you experience Dharma from morning to night. I might be sick tonight. I might be very sick tomorrow. But I'm very happy. Why? You're worth it. You're very worth it. So therefore, whenever you become sick, when you experience difficulty, catch your mind. Catch your mind. Don't let it drift. Don't let it go off. Catch your mind. Don't let it become bitchy. Don't let it control you. Immediately catch your mind and say, I am happy to be sick. Then you will be. Immediately. Immediately. Don't be bitchy. Don't be like you were before you met the Dharma. Before you met the Dharma, you become sick, you become temperamental, you have a black face, you want people to feel sorry for you. Then after the Dharma, you act the same way. What Dharma are you practicing? Catch yourself. It helps a lot. It helps a lot. I'm not telling you this to be sympathetic to me or think I'm a great practitioner. I really mean it. I really mean it. So when you feel unwell, unless you're about to collapse, even you're about to collapse, feel happy. Before you collapse, think, may other people's suffering come to me. May their sickness come to me. May everybody's sickness in this room come to me now. May all of you who will be sick, who are sick, who are not well, may your sickness come to me. May I suffer for you. May I absorb your suffering and sickness and body pains. May I be very sick tonight, tomorrow, the next day, until you are healed. And I happily do so. Generate that type of mind. Generate that type of attitude, and you'll be practicing Dharma. And there's no reason to be sad. Do you know why? Ego makes you sad. Ego makes you happy. So when you're tired now, it's Dharma practice. Why does your guru drag you all over the place? You're tired. How about your guru? Your guru must be very tired also. So you think your guru is dragging you everywhere, make you stay up all night, make you wait. You should be happy. Why? He's purifying your karma. He's making you endure difficulties and tiredness for a good reason. You've been tired before working. You've been tired before going out. You've been tired before drinking. You've been tired going out with your boyfriend, girlfriend. What's the difference today? You're tired, but it's for the Dharma. We had a wonderful day. Why do we have a wonderful day? Because so many people plan. All we need to do is just go into the bus, come out, 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 go into the bus, come out. Instead of sending someone to explain things to you, I came personally. I came personally. Why? So that the first pilgrimage will be a not waste. So what I want to leave all of you with is this. Please, how you act before you <coughs> got the Dharma and how you act after you got the Dharma, the attitude must be different. Your body you can't control. You can't. But your mind you can control. So how you were before the Dharma and took refuge and how you are after, make, compare and make a transformation. And think, make a transformation. What's the transformation? Let me give you the hint. Endure suffering for others. Endure difficulties for others. Endure difficulties. And when you endure difficulties, be very, 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 very happy. Why? You can serve others. Others won't be sick. Others won't suffer. Others have less problems because of your endurance. Doesn't that make you happy? It makes me happy. On top of that, we should endure suffering for others because we know the Dharma and they don't. It's like an animal to be hurt, they don't realize it. We should endure their suffering for them because they don't know how to get out of it. We know how. So we know how, we should do it. If a mother acts like a child and a child acts like an adult, it looks funny. 
When a child acts like a child, the mother acts like an adult, we're like, wow, that's the way it should be. Like that, those who know the Dharma should endure much more. Today, I've taken you from morning, from afternoon to now. We're only, almost going on 12 hours straight of a Dharma tour of our whole organization. We're all very tired. We're all very exhausted. But personally speaking, I'm very happy. Why am I very happy? We did something good today. So what I've shared with you today, what I've explained to all of you today, please explain to other Dharma people. Save my lungs for me. Save my lungs for me. Share with other people. Talk with other people. Pay attention clearly when your Lama's talking. Don't fidget. Don't move. Don't, don't gossip. Focus clearly when your Lama's speaking. Why? He's giving you knowledge. Then share that knowledge with everybody else so that the Dharma will spread. Okay? So this is Kichara Saraswati Arts. If you are my student, if you are my friend, if you're associated with me, if you have anything to do with Tsem Rinpoche, then your distinguishing quality of having that association with me is enduring suffering for others happily. Oma Sara City Hring Hring Oma Sara City Hring Hring this be a memory of our Dharma work and our efforts to make our organization grow and benefit many people.